Hi, I'm Linda Abbott. I'm a consultant with TNG and an advisory board member with Nibeta. And my name is Tim Kaysen, and I am also a consultant with TNG and Nibeta advisory board member. And we are coming to you today to continue in our series of discussing one team versus two teams as it relates to behavioral intervention team strategies and implementation. And in this section, we're talking about one additional recommendation that we have for you all to manage that one team model effectively. And it really has to do with your membership structure. One of the number one reasons we hear from clients as to why they want to have multiple teams is because they feel like certain individuals, typically of a higher hierarchy in the institution, need to be involved in the discussions as it relates to those high level cases. And I think that that's an institutional decision that is completely appropriate. But if you can structure your membership um, in, in the way that we would recommend, I think that that's going to alleviate some of the concerns that re um, result in the, the feeling that we need to have multiple teams. And so based on your level of membership, that's going to impact your, your responsibility as it relates to communication, um, attendance at meeting, and then overall database access. And so, Linda, do you mind walking through some of those um, membership levels? Yeah, so we think of these as sort of rings, right? So at the center, we've got our core membership. What we often talk about is our core four. Our core and our next level is inner. Our core um, and inner circle level members are present at every meeting. This is your static membership. They're coming every week. They are um, uh very similar in, in their access. I think the main difference is, Tim, we talk about our, our core members generally have um, a trained backup. So if they cannot be present, they have someone who is ready to step in. Our inner circle members often will have a proxy who can mm -hmm. step in on their behalf if needed. So those are what make up generally our eight to 10 members that are meeting every week and are always there to be a part of that information gathering. What we recommend for this is going to that next circle, which is your middle circle members. Middle circle members are people like, um, depending on your, your community, possibly someone from Title IX, maybe your general counsel, maybe your VP. These are members who are going to be invited to come into the meeting when it is appropriate and necessary when we need to get or share information with them related to a particular case. They do not need to be there every week. So we're allowing them to function as a team member without having to be there every week and without having to have two separate teams to get the same function that we're going for, which is what we often hear as Tim said a minute ago. Right, and so the, the high level cases are gonna be fewer than the, the lower level cases. And so this model allows those individuals that do need to be involved in those higher level discussions to focus on the other responsibilities that they have at the institution, but still be invited, still come and still participate when there are those higher level concerns, whether it's Title IX, legal counsel, or what have you. And so I think if uh, membership can be broken down more systematically and structured, that's gonna be really effective. You have your you know, recommendation of five to 10 static members. Data shows most teams keep the average size about eight to 10, um, but no more than five to 10 in your, your core and your inner. And then middle circle, invite in those higher level individuals for those higher level discussions. All right, we hope this is helpful as, as a recommendation as you move towards that one team model. We'll see you next week. Thank you.